Okie dokie. In this problem, they ask which of the following is a list of all the asymptotes of R of X. And so when it's in this factored form like this, it actually helps us out more so with identifying the vertical asymptotes. So the vertical asymptotes will be the X values that make the denominator equal to zero. So if we have anything up top divided by zero, we're going to get an undefined function value. So if we find the X values that make the denominator equal to zero, then we will have the X values, the locations of our vertical asymptotes. And so what we do is set each factor equal to zero, each factor that's in the denominator. And then when we solve for each of these X values, it tells us the X values that make the factors in the denominator, therefore the entire denominator equal to zero. So looking, we're looking for x equals 6 and x equals negative 2. So if we find a set of asymptotes that have both of those and none of the others have those, then we found our answer. So if we break out the eraser, we see that b will be our answer. Let's go ahead and talk about where this y equals 3 comes from. Imagine we expanded the numerator and denominator. In other words, foiled out the top and the bottom. If we foiled things out up top, we'd have x times 3x. Then we'd have a bunch of other terms on top. We'd have some sort of x term and some constant. But the x squared term is my main focus. It's really the main focus for horizontal asymptotes because you're just looking for the highest exponent term. You're looking for the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. So if we expanded the denominator, our x squared term would just be 1x squared. So when we have 3x squared divided by 1x squared, we have the highest exponent term on top divided by that at the bottom. Uh, and when the exponents match each other, when they're the same, when they're both x squared, what we do is we take the coefficients 3 over 1 and 3 becomes our horizontal asymptote and that's pretty much it so these were the verticals this was the horizontal and we have our answer all right let's go and do at least i think one more uh two more maybe all right so starting with this one we're going to set the denominator values or sorry factors equal to zero and we will solve for x so we have one-fifth. We can eliminate any that don't have one-fifth equal to x. And just like that, we see that our answer is d. Let's talk about where the other values come from, though. x plus 2, the other denominator factor equal to 0. We get negative 2. That matches. Option d as well. And then when we expand the numerator terms namely the x terms. If we do the same with the denominator, we have negative 5x times x. Remember, our goal is to find the x squared term, identify what that x squared term is, so we can, more importantly, identify what the coefficients of the x squared terms are. So negative 1 over negative 5 is equivalent to just 1 fifth. So y equals 1 fifth is our horizontal asymptote. And that matches. All right, let's do one more. X plus 1 equals 0, so x equals negative 1. 3x plus 7 equals 0. 3x equals negative 7. x equals negative 7 over 3. So these are our vertical asymptotes. So negative 1 and negative 7 thirds. So in this case, pretty cool. There's actually two options that have both negative 1 and negative 7 thirds. So we actually need to find the horizontal asymptote. Negative x squared. On the bottom, we have x times 3x. So that's 3x squared. Taking the coefficients, we have negative 1 over 3. So we're looking for negative 1 third as our asymptote. I think that's a, yeah, okay. Um, I hope this helps. If you have any questions on asymptotes or how they relate to these problems, please let me know.